So this is the interface to the uh, Shortel Diagnostic Center. And uh, this is not a tutorial on the Diagnostic Center, but we're going to take a look at packet capture. So down here you'll find Diagnostics, and if you click on the remote packet capture, it will take you to uh, a different screen in which you can set up the parameters of your packet capture. So the packet capture screen is uh, divided into a section that shows you the available devices that uh, can be used to capture. Typically uh, you'll see your switches here. And in this case we've got two switches. And then down here uh, is where your log captures are going to go. So this is a small deployment. We've got uh, an SG220T1 and also a virtual switch. So what we're going to do here is check the box that says we want to capture here. And if you scroll all the way to the right, no capture is running. And if we say apply, you know, to the start capture, it's going to come up and it's going to give us some options. You can set it to capture for 20 minutes and then turn off. Um, you can also select that you want to capture specific protocols or all protocols. So in this, in this example here, it says for 20 minutes, capture every protocol. Uh, you may find a situation in which you're just interested in capturing SIP. So for troubleshooting, SIP uh, uh, setup, registration, takedown, or maybe just MGCP. Uh, in this scenario, uh, you can also say ignore the duration. So if you're not going to uh, capture anything more than SIP and TLS, you can say ignore the duration uh, for SIP, the TLS, and you could turn the capture on and off using the uh, capture start and stop at the top of the page. In our example for this uh, for this test, we're going to uh, actually capture all packets, and uh, even though this says 20 minutes, we can start and stop it. And so we'll go ahead and say save your capture was successfully submitted and at this point we are now capturing. You can verify that by scrolling to the right and noticing that it says session processing. And at this point it's capturing um, it's capturing all of the information that's hitting uh, this switch address as well as the server and <clears throat> all of the traffic between now, <clears throat> at times you may uh, be interested in, in capturing other aspects of your network. And when we talk about setting up the Wireshark options, I'll show you how to do that. But at the moment, this is how things look from the Shortel side. And you can now go up here under Stop Capture and go ahead and hit Apply. It will ask you, uh, it will ask you to confirm that and at that point it will stop the capture and once session is processing and it will then move the file over to this location. Now Shortel doesn't uh, ship their system with Wireshark. You'll have to download uh, Wireshark but if you do download it when uh, you select an example of a packet capture and you click on it, it will invariably ask you to open with, uh, in this case, Wireshark. And at that point, we can go ahead and bring up Wireshark. 
and here is the, the packet capture itself. Before we take a look at the uh, specifics of the packet capture, let me show you a couple of elements that uh, I think are important uh, when you're doing this type of troubleshooting. If you go up under statistics, it might be the first place you want to go, and if you take a look at the protocol hierarchy, this will pop up a screen that shows you the relative uh, value of the different aspects of the protocol capture. You would expect to see, you know, a hundred percent or so of everything being Ethernet and also it being protocol version 4. Uh, you'll see what's media gateway, what's uh, session description, and you, you know, UDP here. And typically this is your media stream. This is captured voice. Uh, not all of it, but it's a good indication of how much of your packet capture was in fact um, voice. So this is a, a good place to go. The other thing that you might look at is under statistics, you can also uh, look at conversations as well as endpoints. Now conversations doesn't mean voice recordings. In this case, it just means the, uh, the, the points between uh, two dialogues, two TCP UDP dialogues, and it's going to list out um, those devices here. You'll see, of course, your Shortel devices. Um, sometimes they're spelled out very clearly, sometimes just uh, with a MAC address. And, and you can do the same thing with endpoints, and I'll show you various endpoints. At that point, um, let's drill down on the actual protocols and take a look at uh, a voice capture. If you go out to the Shortel uh, headquarters server site, and you look in the famous Shoreline data folder, you will find the usual uh, repositories for the various components of the Shortel system. And you will note version 14, there's a new file here called rpccap. These are your packet captures. So if you click on that, uh, invariably, you'll find your list of uh, Typically, they're loaded automatically into the Diagnostic Center, but I just wanted you to know where they were. So let's take, uh, we've got the capture here. And uh, once again, let's take a quick look at the statistics. So um, if we look at the protocol hierarchy, we can see the specifics of the data that we capture, uh, frame level, Ethernet uh, and so forth. And what you're interested to note is that uh, a good 95% of this capture was UDP, of which um, real time protocol, this is definitely your media, is about 91% of the total capture. So there's a lot of great information here. If you also look at statistics at your endpoints, you will see a list of endpoints that describe uh, the two ends of a particular conversation. And again, I use the word conversation not to mean voice recording, but the TCP UDP dialogue between two endpoints. So here you can see we have some traffic going to our sonic wall. And you can see the various uh, um, MAC addresses of the other devices that were captured. Let's see if by IP address here, if we use the IP4 tab. So this is good, good, helpful information, especially if you're trying to shoot uh, one-way audio issues. The actual capture here, um, Again, it's not a tutorial on Wireshark per se. There's plenty of other stuff out there on it. But over here, you have your list of packets captured in the order they were captured. You have your source uh, and destination of, of your capture, your protocol, the specific protocols that were captured, uh, and then the information. Uh, as you can see here, is lots of MGCP and Shortel. 
uh, you're basically looking at MGCP unless you're just installing the latest uh, uh, handsets, which are SIP, in which case you're going to see SIP dialogues happening here. You can create some uh, filters. So here I could say, just show me SIP um, and uh, MGC, MGCP. And at that point, we're just going to have a list of uh, SIP and MGCP points. <coughs> so let's go ahead and clear that. And at this point, if we go under telephony, uh, we can go to VoIP calls. And at this point, you'll see a list of VoIP calls. Now, I will point out that in uh, Shortel and GCP, excuse me, in Wireshark, and GCP is treated uh, as UDP, not RDP. And you're interested in the RDP for playback. So one of the things you're going to have to do is go into preferences under Wireshark and you're going to set the protocols. Find your protocol list here and scroll through the list down to um, RDP. And at that point, you're going to want to make sure that try to decode RDP outside of conversations is set. It is not set by default. You're going to have to check that. Uh, MGCP treats RDP streams and translation. Uh, that would be your voice, your actual voice conversations. It treats it, treats it as UDP, not RDP. So here we're, we're saying try to decode RDP outside of the conversations, and that will help surface those to, to be uh, listened to and captured. So, We'll do another video on the actual uh, troubleshooting here. This one was uh, basically where I just want to show you the, um, the results of uh, capturing and recording. Now, if we go again here to VoIP calls, you'll see in this particular capture uh, what, uh, what was going on. <clears throat> 192.168.1.57 is the IP address of the Shortel uh, T1SG220 switch here. And what's happening here is we are capturing this information, but uh, we're capturing one side of it. And we're also noting that it's encrypted. Uh, what, what you'll find is that a conversation between two handsets, for example, here's a a conversation between extension 116 and extension 115. And again here, 115 and an outside number. And if you were to uh, take a look at the flow, by clicking the flow here, it'll actually bring up um, the actual call setup. So let's, let's look at a simpler one. SIP is a little simpler to understand. And here uh, we can take a look and see the actual invite message uh, from uh, Gant off to Gray. Let's split this up so you can see it. So from SIP at 116, IP address to SIP at uh, this address. Notice that the uh, to address and from address is the shore gear switch. Okay, so you'll see the return trying, ringing, uh, ultimately the session description protocol being transmitted between the two endpoints, uh, setting up the agreed to uh, codecs, ultimately an acknowledgement to the conversation, and finally the goodbye and the okay. We go up under telephony, put calls. Select a, a conversation. So we can see the from and the to here. If we go ahead and hit that, uh, hit the player button, uh, tell it to go ahead and decode it, you'll see that it actually pops up uh, the recording. So <clears throat> the encrypted phone calls will be just, uh, you will see no audio display that you do here. And you can actually go ahead and check that guy and that guy, hit the play button, 
and you will uh, be listening to both sides of that uh, conversation as, as recorded. You can listen to them individually. Go back here. Okay, and this is how you will work through your uh, one-way audio, because you can see here that this is from 172.16, 1 1.198, port 63, 2.94, to, uh, again, this is the short tell, uh, the short gear switch, uh, 180, the port, the duration of the call, gives you some information about jitter, sequencing, timestamps. Well, you can also use the actual RDP timestamp. Now, it's essential in troubleshooting that you synchronize your NTS servers so that, uh, especially if you're looking at two conversations that are across uh, the country, okay, maybe it's California, this is New York, you're going to have uh, different times, so you have to make sure, uh, and this goes across the board with any type of network debugging, you need to make sure you've got the uh, correct time uh, captures uh, synchronized NTP. So that's what uh, a SIP phone call looks like. And this situation here is a little different. I think that, the, no, these were, uh, this was a phone call to an outside line, and that explains why you see the short tail uh, from address in it. And this guy here, as opposed to this guy. You see, these two guys are SIP, and this guy is MGCP. And in the MGCP case, uh, you've got a fully, this is a fully encrypted, this is what it looks like. You're, you're not going to be able to play this voice back. This voice is an encrypted uh, file. And <clears throat> what's happening here is that the shore gear switch is uh, participating or proxying the two media streams and therefore, uh, you know, handling the encryption process. So uh, the lesson here is twofold uh, as it relates to Shortel. What we can see is that if you're running the MGCP version, uh, you will find that phone calls between um, an extension and an incoming trunk line are encrypted between the switch and the device. Um, when the media flows between devices, especially in the case of SIP phone calls, um, the switch is not participating, and in that case, the, um, the conversation is fully uh, playable, and you should have uh, no trouble playing that uh, conversation back. So. Um, I would also point out that if you're uh, doing your captures on the SIP trunk to your carrier, that's not going to be encrypted either. So I hope you have found this uh, informative and I thank you for viewing.